Conversa de Intervalo traz a entrevista online que eu fiz com a pianista francesa Eloise Bellacon no início dessa semana. Vamos assistir. Eloise, uh, welcome to Sala Cecilia Meirelles. We are very, very happy to have you here. And I'd like to, to ask you if it's the first time you come to Brazil. Yes, it's actually my very first trip even to Latin America. Uh, today I live between Paris and Vienna and I mostly travel and perform in Europe, especially in Germany and in Austria. Uh, there are countries where the classical music uh, is uh, and the classical music market is very dense. There are many concerts, many festivals, and I'm really very excited to discover uh, this vast country uh, and its culture for the very first time. Great. We are looking forward to having you here. And tell, tell us about uh, a bit more about your career in Europe. What you used to do? Uh, do you play only as a soloist? Do you take part in any ensembles? Exactly. I perform as a soloist. Um, actually, I was born uh, in Paris in a, in a music lover family. And music was always, always very present at home. My parents, I met in a choir. My older sister, she played violin, now she's a doctor. And we were, used to play a lot uh, when we were children as a duo. So chamber music was something uh, always very close to my heart. And I also studied um, as a child and as a teenager uh, composition. And uh, then until I passed the, the entrance exam to the Paris Conservatory uh, at 15, I also continued studying composition and When I was 21, I finished my piano studies in Paris and then I went to Germany and I went to Austria to study with a Russian teacher, Lilia Silberstein. And uh, since I'm uh, about 20, I got more and more gradually more opportunities to perform as a soloist and as, as a chamber musician and sometimes also as a um, singer accompanist. So I'm happy to do every sort of uh, possible possible uh sing that's what fascinates me also with piano that you can you can do so many different uh configuration and uh yes today i'm really happy to be lucky enough to live entirely uh for my concerts uh, mainly in europe in particularly uh germany and austria exactly so you are interested in composition do you still compose No, I actually um, stopped composing when I was like 18, 19. But it's something always very important to me. I think you are more uh, in a capacity to understand the music when you uh, yourself, you are able to compose music. And when and why did you choose to be a professional pianist? It actually, uh, it became gradually obvious. Also, I was uh, also interested in conducting and composing, but I would say um, one of my teachers in Paris Conservatory, uh, whose name is Eric Le Sage, he convinced me that I should uh, be careful and try more to concentrate on the piano because he thought it was worth it instead of dispersing myself in too many directions. Uh, but what I said just before is that paradoxically, sometimes I feel that what I learned during my composition course is maybe more important than what I learned during my piano lessons. And for me to be able to understand deeply the music and the genius of the composers is more valuable than being a virtuoso or having fantastic technical skills, which is of course very important as well, but maybe not the most important. It's very interesting that you mentioned that uh, composition makes you a better, a better uh, performer. Uh, yes. So you can understand better the, the, the composer's ideas and how do yeah. they conceive the work. Yes. And when you put yourself uh, at the place of the composer, you understand more why is this passage very uh, surprising. Uh, it's not something that you could expect on, yeah. Etc. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because you are very young, and you know, um, I, I really figure out how to be a young musician, spe specifically how to be a young professional pianist nowadays, that you have so many things that call you out of yourself. 
uh, while um, you, we know that professional musicians need to, to spend a lot of time practicing and studying and everything. How do you deal with this sort of, um, of I would say, difficulty? Maybe not for you, I don't know. Yeah, it's true. Actually, I really feel lucky to be able to spend my days only in contact with eternal masterpieces. And I'm extremely thankful to discover new cities, new places, and new people at every concert. But uh, it can be challenging. You have to focus on the music and, and really trying uh, some time for many days not to go on social media, to be really concentrating. And what I also like in this job is that um, the feeling that you can always improve yourself each time you think you come closer to perfection, but it's always possible to find a better emotion, a better expression. It's, um, it's an endless and it's like the horizon because each time you come closer to the horizon, you, it seems to move away. And I really like this part of, of the job. In my opinion, I think the classical music is now very important and it will always be present in the society. Uh, but we as artists, we really have um, important responsibility and we need to find a way to make everyone understand that classical music is not something which is elitist and it can be appreciated by everyone and even someone who doesn't have a very developed uh, cultural background. I think like classical music is really able to move anyone. You like to play uh, first performances like to, to present to the world firsthand a new piece? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a very exciting process. And I think composers are maybe the more interesting people you can work with because they are the real uh, artists who create. We interprets are only there to recreate and to transmit their, their genius to the audience, but we are actually not so interesting as they are actually, I think. And how, how do you work with the composer? What do you like to ask the composer about the piece you were about to premiere? He just like to understand what was um, his process, what was his first idea and how did he come, what came first in the order of his composing. And I think it's really fascinating. Uh, and if we can observe this on a contemporary composer, we are more closer to understand it for a, a classical, romantic, or baroque composer as well. Uh, but you have chosen a program, not with contemporary pieces, but with wonderful works by Bach and Debussy. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about your choice of program here at Sala Cecilia Merelis? Yes, Bach and Debussy are two composers where, which were which were always close to my heart. I actually did my first two albums with these composers. My first album was um, recording the complete uh, prelude by Debussy on two CDs. And my second album was uh, during the Corona time, I recorded Bach, Art of the Fugue with a new completion because it's uh, incomplete. And uh, there are very different um, musical words uh, the first one is uh, from Baroque, the second one is from Impressionism. And it's a very different way of playing also, because um, we know that um, um, Bach actually uh, wrote on his keyboard music for harpsichord. So I generally don't use any pedal when I'm performing Bach because I want to come as close as possible to the sound of harpsichord that Bach had in mind. And of course, when you perform the Debussy, it's a very inverse process because um, the resonance produced by the pedal is um, very important uh, to the sound in the Debussy language. So it's a very, uh, it's a, a kind of uh, time travel to perform this program. You go from the origin of tonality until what happened when tonality was not there anymore and when composers started to compose uh, in a more modern way. Yeah, but it's very interesting also because you can make a parallel between uh, Bach's uh, French Suite and Debussy's Preludes. Uh, Bach's French Suite gathers different dances and Debussy's Preludes suggest different 
images, different pictures. Do you limit yourself to the notes on the score or are you somehow influ influenced by the title of each movement? That's a very good question because in the case of Debussy, which is very modern for that time when he composed it, is that he wrote the title of each piece, not before the piece, but after the piece and in brackets. So as he didn't want to influence too much uh, the imagination of the audience, as if they should um, guess themselves what's, what's the title. And of course, when you are the interpret, it's very important to know very precisely what uh, the composer had in mind to be able to recreate it in the best way. But I think, and I think it's really also important that the audience has the title and can somehow uh, follow the imagination. You mentioned that during the pandemics, you recorded an album. How do you live during the COVID uh, isolation? Do you study out of every day? Do you prepare new programs? Did you have new plans in mind? What did you do? It was a very strange times because uh, we didn't have any concert, any travel, so it was very quiet. So I spent actually the, the many months of the COVID in Vienna. And actually, for me, it was a great possibility because I dreamed since my childhood to record uh, Bach last masterpiece, The Art of Fugue. And of course, um, this kind of very complex works demands a lot of time to be able just to learn the notes. So I, after a few weeks, I actually got the luck to be able to fix a date for the recording, which I recorded in, in Berlin, the Teldex studio. And this, um, the fact that I had this deadline made me um, actually be very active during the whole months and I practiced and I learned uh, the Bach, the fugues every day. And I was actually totally, I was not depressed because um, I was very active and actually it was, I have good memories from these months. But I'm really thankful that uh, you concert, your beautiful concert hall uh, programmed me because this tour were actually initially planned in uh, 2020, then maybe 2021. And now we are here in 2022. I'm really happy that you can We've welcome me. It. We've got <laughs> it, finally. And future plans, what do, are you intend to do uh, next commitments that you have after your, your concert at Sala Cecilia Marellis? Actually, um, um, from September, we'll have a busy um, beginning of the season. I will perform Schumann Piano Concerto um, at the Berlin Philharmonie. Um, then I will uh, do a Brahms and Bach recital at the Vienna Concert House. Then uh, it will be my, um, I have my own German music festival in Germany, where we, we invite uh, colleagues and friends. And I will also record um, next season um, a CD with orchestra, with French concertos. So that's the plan. Yeah.